Hello, I'm Lamar Townsend. I'm a psychic and energy channeler, a tarot reader, and an astrologer. And in this video, I will be talking about five ways that you can communicate with your ancestors and the dead. Thank you for listening and watching. If you would be interested in a personal reading from me, definitely check out my website, lamartownsendtarot.com, where you can purchase your reading. Here's where you can purchase your reading, and of course I do all different types of readings. I do birth chart readings, psychic tarot readings. You can go right to the store section of my website, and here's where you can view all the services and products that I offer. I do birth chart readings, past life readings, of course I do all different types of psychic tarot readings, candles and spell work. I also do dream interpretation readings, which may come in handy later when we talk about the five ways of communicating with the dead. I also do tarot class sessions. I have evil eye necklaces on sale, which will protect you from negativity and evil eye. I also sell black African black soap, which is good for eczema, dry skin, and any skin issues you can think of. All right. So this is probably my fifth time filming this video. I think I figured out the culprit as to why I've been having issues. I think there's something with OBS and Chrome. Anyways, I digress. I'm now switched from Chrome to Firefox, and so far, so good. So I'm here to talk about the five ways of communicating with the dead. First off, first off I want to preface this by saying that communicating with the dead is not a bad thing. It's not a scary thing. When we die, or it's my belief that when we die and when we pass away, we don't just poof beyond, you know, and it cease to exist. Our energy, our essence, our soul has to go somewhere. So we end up going amongst the ancestors, all right? We end up going amongst the dead, you know, and then we, you know, are able to be the ones that the human beings, the, re the remaining human beings can call on us for help or call on us for assistance or to communicate with them and things of that nature. So it's actually an honor to be an ancestor. It's an honor to be among the dead, uh, which is my belief at least, okay? So here's five ways that you can communicate with the dead and your ancestors. The number one way is to use or utilize a spiritual divination tool such as a pendulum, um, oracle cards, tarot cards, or crystals, for example. Um, obviously, I am someone that is big into tarot. Uh, you know, tarot is the way I make my living. It's my job. It's my career. It's what I love to do. I also love crystals, though. So I'm a big person who's into crystals. This is a big Rose Quartz Tower crystal that I love. Um, and I actually keep on one of my um, kind of spiritual... Um, places, all right? Um, and, you know, uh, an actual altar is also a good tool for when it comes to communicating with your ancestors. An altar can be considered a spiritual tool of divination as well. So, you know, and you can create an altar for your ancestors or any spiritual guide or deity that you feel connected to or that you would like to communicate with. It's important to put things on the altar, of course, that you've feel or you think or you know that the deity ancestor would like so they would feel more compelled to come into your space your home or whatever and communicate with you so for example if you know that you know if you have an ancestor that really loved rose quartz maybe get a rose quartz crystal or a rose quartz pendulum and, and meditate you know or you know you know, just talk with them or, you know, keep it by your bedside or keep it on their altar, stuff like that. Um, oh my God, excuse me. <laughs> the second way is to visit a medium or a psychic with mediumship capabilities. Now, a medium is someone who actually communicates with the dead. It's literally their job. It's their specialty, you know, that they communicate with the dead. I am a medium myself. An energy channeler is the same thing as a medium, well, technically, because you're channeling energy. And the dead spirits are just energy, all right? So if you yourself are able to do this, then, of course, you can do this. But if you don't feel comfortable doing it or if you feel like you don't have the skills to do so, definitely reach out to a medium such as myself or someone with psychic abilities who can also tap into the dead tap into communicating with spirit guides and things like that, because there are people out there who don't just solely identify as a medium. Maybe they identify as an astrologer or a psychic, but they have once again, mediumship capabilities. So, 
Or another way is to just kind of practice your own mediumship capabilities via going back to number one, the spiritual tools and divinations, all right, and things of that nature. All right, number three is via your dreams. How many of you have had dreams of your ancestors or people who have passed away? First of all, that is that ancestor or that person who's passed away speaking with you or communicating with you. Because, of course, once we go on the other side, we can still communicate, you know, with with human beings. But, you know, it just takes a while for them to get to the place where they feel comfortable or they understand how to communicate with, I almost said us, but them. Because I'm a spiritual soul, have or I'm a human being, a spirit having a human being experience, but I'm in the human being realm. So anyway, <laughs> I say all that to say dreams are a really good way of communicating with your ancestors and the dead. One way is via lucid dreaming. All right, so some people can actually control their dreams. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, or if you don't, you know, not everyone can do that. Um, another way is via number four, writing a letter and putting it somewhere special, such as under your pillow when you sleep or on an ancestor altar or burning it. Burning it, you know, is a way of basically sending it to the ethers, to the spirit realm. You know, what do you, what happens when you burn a piece of paper? The paper literally disappears. It becomes, you know, dust or whatever, but you know, the essence of that paper goes into the spirit realm. It's kind of like the same thing with candles. When you burn candles, where does all that wax go? you know, it kind of dissipates into the ethereal realm. It becomes spiritual energy for the spirits to use and manifest your desires. So another way is through candles, but um, writing a letter, you know, and putting it somewhere special or even saying it out loud, putting it under your pillow, maybe being specific in that letter and asking your spirit guides and ancestors to give you a sign as to that they hear you or, you know, give you some sort of sign as to, you know, an answer back in your letter and be specific because, you know, sometimes your ancestors and the dead will give you a sign, but they may not give you the sign you're looking for. They may give you a sign in the form of a song on the radio or something someone says, and, you know, you don't think it's the sign, but it is the sign actually. Um, that brings us to number five, which is the last one, which is just talking out loud to them, just like I'm talking to you right now, um, or talking out loud during prayer to them. You know, often when people pray, what are you doing? You're talking to God. God is, you know, I don't know if God's dead per se, you know, that's a whole video on, on itself, but God is definitely a spirit. God is definitely energy. God is definitely on the other side with those who have passed on with the ancestors, with the deities, with the, with, you know, all those types of people. So when you're speaking to God, you have to know that all the, those ancestors and deities and angels also hear you too. So, you know, when you're praying at night, you know, also call out, you know, your ancestors or, you know, your deities that you're working with, acknowledge them. Or, you know, maybe, you know, one of my favorite things to do is to actually sit by the, by my altars often, I will like have conversations with Cleopatra, you know, sometimes I'll post them on YouTube, you know, obviously I don't always show the altar or, you know, cause the altar should be very sacred, you know, the spiritual tool and divination should be very sacred and things like that. But I mean, when we talk out loud, they hear us, you know, for all I know, there could be a spirit sitting right next to me. Hopefully it's a good spirit in the name of Jesus, but you know, spirit is all around us. The key is to figure out how, or what is your best way of communicating with them? How do they like to be communicated with? All right. That's the key. So thank you so much for listening and watching. I hope we got through this this version with no technical difficulties. I'm kind of sad because in the first video, there were like a ton of people in the chat. And I had to delete that video because it was just too choppy. But, you know, I don't know. Maybe someone's watching now. Either way, I'm going to post this on my YouTube. I'm going to post this on my podcast. And I appreciate you all for listening and watching. These are five ways that you can communicate with the dead and communicate with your ancestors. It's a beautiful thing to be able to communicate with the dead and your ancestors and to actually acknowledge them when they answer you back. All right. Love and light. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Remember, if you want a reading from me, definitely check out my website, lamartownsintero.com. And I would love to do a reading for you, you know, until the next time, love and light, God bless and no stress. And I will catch you all in the next video. Remember to follow me on my Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitch, YouTube, Vimeo, and my podcast as well. Until next time, love and light.